a new post, new tone, some new background music there. Justin Trudeau clearly trying to set a new narrative for his party. So will it work? Let's bring in the front bench. Former BC Premier Christy Clark, she's now senior advisor with Bennett Jones, CTV News political analyst and former Toronto Mayor John Tory, and CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair. Thank you all for being here. Welcome to Thursday. That's really a Friday for most people, and it's fitting that the Liberals are starting this full court press ahead of a time when families are getting together. So, Christy, typically, we see governments wait to roll out things in budgets and then the days following that. Do you think that this out of the box, this is out of the box thinking or is it just desperation on their part right now? Well, I think they're gearing up. I mean, you know, you can lose elections are often won and lost around the Thanksgiving table or the Easter table. That's when people get together and you start to, you know, you start talking about it. And, Gee, I'm really surprised that my mom wants to vote that way or whatever. And people start to re-examine the way they're thinking about things. So very smart to be talking about it right now. Good strategy. I think the problem the Liberals have though with losing millennials is that 2015 was 10 years ago. So millennials are 10 years older. They're trying to get into the housing market. Lots of them don't even want to have two kids or even one kid because they can't afford to move out of a one bedroom apartment. These kinds of life decisions, people are feeling really stalled and they are angry. And I, you know, I think the problem that the Liberals have now is you own your record. And 10 years, not enough has happened to improve the housing situation. Now, whether or not Polyev is going to be able to improve that, hard to say. These are problems that are happening in country in big cities all around the world. Everybody's experiencing it and not anybody's really really found a solution. But, you know, part of politics is making doing things that are going to change things, and one of them is talking mm -hmm. about caring about changing things. And I think we're sort of on the talking about caring part of it so far. Yeah, and John, to that end, just some of the quotes here. You deserve an economy that gives you a fair shot at success. And another one where the Prime Minister says, with that sort of somber music behind him, how can you get ahead when the cost of groceries and everything else takes up a bigger and bigger bite out of your wallet? Uh, is he doing a good job here of telling Canadians, I feel your pain? Well, it's a start, but it's a bit it's a bit long into the process, you know, and I think in that sense, I think it's it's the right message to probably the right group, because when you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole, uh, a political hole like this, then you're going to go back to the people that are most likely to, you know, come back to you first. And he did, as you say, own that group uh, back uh, when he first got elected and he sort of gradually lost them over time. It isn't a new thing. I mean, you would hear younger people in that age group talk over the last 10 years about how they were becoming less and less enchanted uh, with him. Uh, but I think there's two other other things that he, you know, has to, has to deal with beyond sort of repeating and carrying through with this message. Uh, and one is to create a greater sense of hope. They're alienated not just about housing prices and about affordability issues, but a lot of them have become, you know, negative and pessimistic about whether they're included, whether there really is a spot for them uh, in this country. Uh, and the second thing he has to do is to get some help from the economy. I mean, all the talk about mm. renter's bill of rights or all those kinds of things are not going to matter much if we're still in the same situation a year from today or six months from today with interest rates and with, uh, you know, the general kind of, um, trying to think of the right word, sluggish nature of, of our economy in the country. So I think he needs some help and he's got to keep at this message, but it's a start. Yeah, so Tom, a start, but can he recapture that magic of 2015 when he was able to really speak to that segment of the population and get them out in droves to support the Liberal Party? It was especially that last part, Mike. He was able to get young people out to vote. They stayed home in droves in the 2000 election where Stephen Harper won his majority. And Trudeau, much to his credit, was, was a, I was in that election against him. And I can tell you, Paul Dewar, my advice. Uh, regretted friend uh, from Ottawa had, had gotten more votes than he had the prior election in 2015. He got more votes than 2011, but Trudeau won the riding by 10,000 votes. That's how many people he was getting out to vote who had not voted in the last election. He got them energized. He got them excited. There was a project. That soft tone that he affects uh, in that ad, I'm not sure that's working anymore. If I were one of his advisors, I'd say I'd try to be a little bit more affirmative. I say it with tongue firmly in cheek, but I also think that Prime Minister Trudeau is going to have to decide whether or not he wants to be Prime Minister of Canada or Premier of the province of Canada. Because yesterday he was taking care of standard form contracts for leases. 
hello, the 1867 Constitution, in so many words, pure provincial jurisdiction. Today, he was on about uh, child care, one of the, my favorite pilferings of an NDP policy by the Liberals. I'll always grant them the fact that they were able to bring it in. But then, out of nowhere, he starts talking about early childhood education. Hmm. I think education might be provincial jurisdiction as well. So big federal things like, oh, our armed forces? How about immigration? Well, those are going so well, they don't re they have extra time on their hands. So now they're going to start managing provincial things as well. The provinces take care of subjects like education and health that are closer to the public. And that's why Mr. Trudeau is trying to put some sort of imprimatur on that, because he's hoping that somehow, to John's point, that it'll humanize, it'll show that he cares. But at some point, he's going to have to talk about what he's responsible for. He wants to run the country. He doesn't want to be the premier of its largest province. So I think that uh, Trudeau's got a bit of an identity crisis, and the people advising him haven't quite figured out what they're about. But, Christy, is part of the reason he's doing that because he's seen a little bit of the success that Mr. Polyev has had, even though he as well has sort of waded in to those sort of jurisdictional issues, talking about making sure that he's doing away with red tape so that, um, you know, how homes can be built in different cities. Again, not his jurisdiction. So are the, are, are the Liberals looking at that and saying, you know what, we can play that card as well? Yes, absolutely they are. And they, they need that generation, as I said earlier. And uh, you know, I, I think that uh, John is absolutely right, too, when he says it's not just about housing, it's about the whole kit and caboodle of people feeling like they can't get ahead. But I think for them, the, you know, the, the issue is, is that they can't do it. If you've tried to build a deck on your home in Vancouver or anywhere else in this country recently, you'll find out that the years it may take you to get the permits, none of them are coming from the federal government. And it is very, it's kind of dangerous. Like, I know they want to sound like they care about it, but it's kind of dangerous to suggest to the public that you can actually do things about the things that you say you want to change when you actually can't deliver. And I think that's where they're going to find themselves. John, I want to come back to the fact that we are seeing these sort of pre-budget rollout um, uh, of announcements. Um, and, and it feels like in the lead up to the budget, we may know all about the budget before it's actually tabled in the House of Commons. Uh, it feels like it's on purpose. Do you think it's the right move to essentially try and sell the budget before it drops? Well, yes and yes. It's on purpose for sure. And yes, it's the right strategy. And it, it is the 21st century, if not the 20th century strategy. I mean, now, you know, in the old days, if, if it, the color paper that the bu uh, budget was printed on was leaked in advance, the ministers would uh, be called upon to resign. Now the designed program is to go out and have everything released except maybe one nugget you save for the poor finance minister to announce on the day. But I think it's the best chance you have to string this out for two weeks and to, uh, you know, make sure that the message that we're talking about now, the for the, the success of this strategy, at least the success in terms of, of, of having them uh, discussing things that are in the budget early and repeatedly and for a long time is proven by the fact we're sitting here talking about it. Uh, but I think the other thing we have to count on to have happen if any of the strategy is going to work, that budget strategy is old, Doug Ford just did it this week, uh, but is that uh, those same young people are going to have to sort of come to a realization, if it's the case, that Pierre Polyev really doesn't share values and doesn't have a value alignment with them because he's speaking now as somebody who saying, well, you're not included, you don't count, but I'm going to make you count, I'm going to speak for you. And they have to sort of switch back to sort of saying, well, maybe Mr. Trudeau can do that too. So I think the strategy, though, of rolling the budget out is seems to be the way it's done now. And I, I think it, you know, it, it's the only strategy that they could possibly adopt. Tom, i got 45 seconds. Do you approve of them basically trying to change the narrative by sketching out the budget ahead of time? Well, during Paul Martin's brief tenure as uh, prime minister, uh, there was a big kerfuffle because there had been a leak of some of the contents of his budget and there was actually an RCMP investigation. So times really have changed. This great secret that we had in our society, as you correctly say, it's now a, a very long uh, dance of the seven veils where a little bit is given every day. They're trying to condition public opinion. They're trying to give themselves an image. They're trying to fight back. I think that Trudeau's had a good week. I think that he did very well pushing back, for example, against the provincial premiers on the carbon tax. For once, he was saying, I've already told you if, you, if we agree on the result, you can have your own system like BC has, or like Quebec has, or like the Northwest Territories. They, they didn't have much of an answer to that. So I think that Trudeau is trying to set it up. He's not got the same data set as Poiliev. Poiliev has such 
deep polling on the Canadian psyche. He's brilliant at exploiting it. He goes exactly where the votes are. Trudeau and his crew, they're used to relying completely on Trudeau. And Trudeau's good at this stuff, but it's not enough. You have to have that deep information, that deep polling, those focus groups, the data that the Conservatives have bought with their impressive war chest. I think that that's the type of thing that's going to decide the next election. Who can speak to those weaknesses and to what people want to hear? I know it's a shocker. Yes, sometimes politicians tell people what they want to hear. <laughs> it, indeed, a shocker, Tom. I'm kidding. Uh, but to Christie's point, uh, now Justin Trudeau's got a record to run on, and uh, there's a bit of a history there that Canadians will look at at the same time.